We are in lesson three, and this is going to be a spelling lesson where I'm going to dictate the sounds the letters represent that we just read aloud in lesson two. This program will alternate between lessons where we will read the letters and the words in each of the lessons, and then on the subsequent lesson, we'll reverse the process, and you'll hear me dictate the sounds, the letters, and the words represent from the previous lesson, and you're going to spell those uh, sounds or words. In this instance, we're going to be spelling individual letters, but almost all the lessons after this will be uh, working with words, not just individual letters. So you'll print out two sheets of paper. The first sheet of paper is going to be your practice paper. Now you'll see where you can print out those um, two pieces of paper from lesson three in the online program. And the second paper is going to be for quiz number one. What we do is we have quizzes. We have 203 quizzes in this online program. And after you complete generally two or three or four lessons, depending on which unit you're in, you will take a spelling test so that you can have feedback as to how well you're doing. And what we recommend is, or what I recommend is, that you score 80% or above before you go to the next lesson. Because you have to demonstrate mastery of the material that we're presently covering before you want to go to the next lesson. These lessons are a hierarchy. And uh, it's if you think of building a wall, you're building a foundation. You want to get the first layer of bricks solidly established before you start row two. And so I want you to make sure that you have the information solidly established before you go on to the next lesson. So the recommendation then is to, if you can score 80% or better on these spelling quizzes that you're going to get periodically, that's pretty good feedback to you that you have done well enough to proceed to the next lesson. If you don't score 80% I or above, I suggest you review the, the lesson that you're on or even go back one or two lessons and go over the material again uh, and then retake the quiz. It's a, it's a balance you're trying to establish. Y you want to go fast enough so that you have a sense of momentum. And you, but you don't want to go so fast that you're not getting a solid foundation established. And as you begin to work in these lessons, you'll get a feel for that. But it's, it's a delicate balance because if you start going too slowly and you demand perfection of yourself, and I'm not going to go to the next lesson until I score 100%, that might slow you down in a way that's not helpful for you. Because it's okay if you miss a spelling here or there. Um, on the other hand, as I said, you don't want to say, well, you know, I scored 60%, but that's good enough. I'm going to go to the next lesson because I want to finish this whole program. That won't work either. Because again, you want to establish that solid foundation. So right now in lesson three, I'm going to dictate the sounds the letters represent from lesson two. So you can go back and print out lesson two because that will be your answer key for lesson three. Uh, as I make the sound for each of the letters from the 13 rows in lesson two, I want you to write the letter down or the letter team that represents that sound. And then you can check your answer against the answer key, which you've printed out, which is, again is from lesson two uh, in the online program. Uh, but also the letters are going to appear on the screen in a delayed fashion so that you can also monitor this visually in lesson three. So when I make a sound, I'll pause a moment so you have a chance to write the letter down on your, on your practice paper. But then the letter will appear on the screen itself. So you can, um, if you don't want to look at the letters on the screen and you just want to simply go by listening, you can just not watch the screen and write the letters and then you can check your answer, what you've written down against the answer key. Or you can, you can always hit the pause button as we're going through these sounds and uh, that way you can adjust the pace of the uh, video so that it 
you keep up with the content. So what I'm going to do now is, again, our, our lessons are going to alternate between lessons where the words are read aloud, and then we're going to go to spelling lessons. And so this is our first spelling lesson. So you're going to listen to me pronounce the sound and write the letter that represents the sound. We begin now. There are 13 rows. We begin in row one. The first sound is Z. Z. And you write the letter Z on your practice paper. This is row one. There are five sounds per row. The next sound in row one, G. G. B. B. W. W. V. V. All right, so we just completed the first row. And again, if you went back to lesson two and printed out lesson two, you'll see that these five letters, Z, G, B, W, and V, are the five letters represented in row one from lesson two. We're going to go on now to row two. Now, the next sound I make is going to actually be two sounds together. Qua. Qua. If you break those two sounds, what you're actually hearing is k and wa combined. Qua. In English, when the sounds k and w are combined, we have a team that we use to represent that sound. And that team is Q-U. Now, we haven't talked about vowel sounds yet, but U is one of the five vowel sounds in English, A, E, I, O, and U. And we're going to spend a lot of time with each of those individual sounds. But when the U comes right after the letter Q, it's not considered to be a vowel. It's part of the consonant team Q, U. Notice we underline it because we underline teams in this system we're going to be developing. So whenever you have a letter team, you underline it. This is a two-letter consonant team. U counts as a part of the consonant team QU. And again, whenever you hear the sounds qua in a word in English, almost every time it's going to be spelled with the QU team. All right, the next sound. T. T. N. N. Z. Z. That's the end of row two. Row three. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. Duh. Now the next sound is. And as we have discussed in lessons one and two, we have three ways to represent the sound k. We have the letter C, we have the letter K, and we have a team. And I want you to write the team in English that represents the sound k. And that's going to be the team CK. And we underline CK. Now, to use CK in a word, we have to have a short vowel directly in front of it, and we'll be talking about short vowels quite a bit very, very soon. The next sound. <sighs> Row four. <sighs> now, here we have the k sound coming up again. In this instance, I don't want you to use K. And I don't want you to use CK to represent that sound. What would you represent it with then? The letter C. C does represent another sound in English, as we've mentioned, but we'll cover that much further in the program. For now, whenever you encounter the letter C, the words are going to always, uh, the letter is going to always represent the sound k within the words. Wa, wa. Yeah, yeah. 
Row five. G. G. Mmm. Mmm. Here we have the sound coming up k again. It will not be C and it will not be CK. What letter represents the sound k? The letter K. J. J. Row six. Now, this sound is going to be where the letter is representing its second sound. And the sound is Z. Z. Here we use the letter S to represent the sound Z and we double underline it. Now the other way we represent the sound Z it was, is with the letter Z. When I do dictation, if I dictate the sound Z, use the letter Z to represent that sound unless I tell you that the letter to represent that sound is going to be representing its second sound. The next sound is a team, k, k, all, all. The next sound is actually two sounds together, k, k. And actually, if you break it down into the component parts, we actually have the sound k and the sound s combined very quickly in, a, in an explosive manner. And when that happens, we have a letter to represent that sound. And that letter is the letter X. S, S. Row seven, B, B. Z, Z. Now here we represent that sound with the letter Z because I didn't tell you that the letter representing that sound is going to represent its second sound. So whenever I make the sound Z, unless I indicate the letter will represent its second sound, use the letter Z to represent the sound. Mmm. Mmm. T. T. The next sound will be represented by a team. K, k. Row eight, qua, qua. Now here we have QU. Remember Q and U together represent the sound KW, which is qua. I didn't tell you that we were going to use a team for this sound qua, because whenever you hear that sound qua, you're going to always use QU. So there's no need for me to tell you to use the team. You'll just have to remember in English, when K and W are combined, those sounds, qua, you use the letter team QU to represent that sound, and we underline teams in this system. The next sound is R, R. D, D. So here we have X representing the sounds K and S combined. K. Row nine. V. V. J. J. The next sound will be represented where a letter is representing its second sound. Z. Z. That's the letter S, and it's important you put two lines under the letter S in this instance to indicate it's representing its second sound. N, N, O, O. Row 10, H, H. The next sound is and I want you to use not the letter C and not the letter team CK. K. That would be K. Duh. Duh. 
r r Now for this sound, don't use K and don't use CK. K. K. Row 11. Z. Z. T. T. S. S. K. K. F. F. Row twelve. Mmm. Mmm. Wa. Wa. P. P. G. G. V. V. And our final row thirteen. B. B. Z, z, n, n, o, o. The next letter will represent its second sound. Z, z, and this completes the dictation for lesson three.